So I'm going to make a video where I'm going to try to add a feature to this game that a couple of Discord users and me are working on. Uh, I think I made a video about this in the past, but just as a quick overview, um, we're making like a dungeon crawler where you spawn at level one and you have to kind of find the stairs down and you can keep on going down and get harder, more randomly generated maps um, and fight different creatures and stuff. But this is definitely in its infancy. Um, but the feature I wanted to refactor is a little bit of a system redesign slash restructuring where I want to add the ability to basically the player can hold down um, tab or something or they can hold down F. And I want that to basically have all the interactable entities. We're doing like an ECS system, so entity component system. But these labels above the interactable things, I want them to just turn on when I hold down a button. Right, so you can add like it, it just adds more to the accessibility. So I can easily know like, okay, I can interact with this or I can't interact with this. Um, and obviously, if you're watching this video for the first time, um, you're not going to know anything about the code, and I'm not going to explain anything about the code. But maybe you can guys can just have fun watching me kind of refactor some code and watch me struggle because this project's getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, getting kind of hard to like do stuff. So first thing I need to do though is I'm gonna do a top-down approach. So I know I need the user to be able to hold down a key and then I need that key to do something. So I do believe we have like a create controllers file, which kind of has a map for all of those keys. Um, and we have like a, a list of controls that we can basically use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add one here called, I'll call it like um, highlight interactables. Kind of a verbose name, but I can't think of a smaller one to do but basically that's control and now if i scroll down in my code there is a mapping that's set up to basically map a keyboard um key to that control right so for example let's just do tab i don't know if it's called tab or key tab but i'm gonna go ahead and map that to that control here and i think we also need to come down here and add it so i think there's a lot of like um boilerplate that's happening here to basically add a single new key binding but uh, yeah let's make sure this works so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go and make sure that on the key down i'm gonna go to this handle keyboard handler i'm gonna print out the key event so i'm just gonna say e.code and i want to make sure that this prints out like tab or something so let's open up the terminal and you'll get to see a little bit of live investigation i guess you can call it so if i were to click tab while i have the game in focus it prints out tab Cool. So all that was just so that I could know what is the proper key I need to use. And I'll just go ahead and put tab there. And now something cool about the game is that we actually have like a settings. And when you add something to that map, you will see that I can actually change that key binding. So over here we have a tab here and I can change this to F if I want to and go ahead and close that. And now when I press F, it's actually going to run that command. So if you have your code set up in a way that you share like variables across different components, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to add new functionality. Now, I think we'd have to put some space between these because, like, this is looking pretty crowded here, right? I don't know why it says move, move, move. But let's just go ahead and go to this code real quick, and we're going to refactor this. Um, one thing that I like to do when at work we try to do is called the the good camping rule or the keep the camp clean rule. Oh, the campfire rule? I don't know what it is. Let's go to software and look that up. Software campfire rule. Is that what it's called? The campsite rule. There it is. So this is a rule where basically if you're, you know, moving through your code and you see something that like looks ugly or could be refactored, just go ahead and do it. Go ahead and clean it up so that your system is in a better state, right? It's the campfire rule. If you see like a magic number, go ahead and refactor that out to a constant. And it's also a matter of like, do you have enough energy to do that refactoring? Because sometimes you'll get down to a, a rabbit hole of refactoring something and it's been, you spend like four hours trying to refactor it and you probably wish you never even done it to begin with. So let's go and find this component. I believe it's called like a settings component. So I'll go to settings form. And there's like hard coded move somewhere. So let's go and try to figure out where uh, that move thing is being hard coded because I forgot at this point. Right here, so move. We don't want to hard code move. We're just going to say up, down, left, right, uh, highlight interactable. Now, these aren't the most like user friendly labels. Like probably these should be, you know, with spaces in between them and we need to space this out. So I didn't mean to make it take a picture of that. 
Um, let's see if we can just add a little bit of styling to the field set, just so we can add some gap in between this. So I think we have here gap a space of two. Um, I don't know where those are defined, right? So if you don't, if you're working with a code base and you don't know where something's defined, you could just basically control copy, search your entire project for it, and there you go. There's a bunch of predefined spaces that we could potentially use. Space two all the way through twenty. So let's try using that. I'm just going to go ahead and say ten here. Not enough. I'll say twenty. There we go. Looks better already. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and just ship that. I think that looks good. Like it's it's in a better state. So that's all I wanted to do. That's my little campfire rule that I kind of applied. Okay, so now let's go back to the actual code. When I press that key, I want to basically turn on that control and probably, you know, dispatch. So the way that our system's working, we're kind of dispatching events when users interact with the keyboard. So in our case, let's add a new one called like is, I'll say const is. Uh, highlight interactables control. I'm not a fan of this name. It's super verbose, but whatever. Let's just do this. I'm going to check to make sure it is highlight interactable. Okay, so now we got a little helper function that we can use just so that that if statement check is not hard coded all over our code base. Go ahead and delete that console log there. And let's just add one here. I'm going to say if the user is pressing that key, then what we could potentially do is just turn on, um, actually, let's just go here. Let's just, is movement controls. So again, like I was saying, like the way we uh, keep track of this stuff is we usually dispatch events. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a new event, event here, and I will say highlight interactables. And we want to basically put this as either true or false. So I think we have is on here. And we could go ahead and uh, I'm just going to say set highlight interactables. OK, so luckily we're using TypeScript. So when we add a new event type, man, click on that. And it'll take you to your, your enum or your list or whatever. And now we should have access to basically use this. Now, if we go over here, you'll see there's a bunch of hard coded events that we can dispatch in our system. I'm going to go ahead and add one for that new event that we added. And I will say highlight controls event. Or not controls, I'll say interactables. Okay. And then of course we have to add it here. Now, as you're coding, you might realize, okay, there's a lot of boilerplate just to add a single control. All right, there's like a red flag going off where it's like, okay, there's a lot of stuff I had to change just to add it. You know, the ability to listen for a new control. It'd be nice if there's a single place we had to do this, but that's one of those things where it's like, I know it's going to go into a rabbit hole of like touching a ton of code. So let's just stay focused on what we're trying to do. So when that event dispatches, we have this like event queue and we're trying to do like a, a React dispatcher slash like reducer kind of. Like if you use like Redux or something, you, you know, dispatch events. And you have a reducer that listens for those events and it runs different code. That's what we're doing here. So we need to add a case for that new event name. Uh, like, let me just go ahead and make sure I select the right one. Can't type right now. And we're going to go ahead and just run a different um, command here. I'm going to go ahead and say like handle highlight interactables. Now, now that I look at this code, um, all of these, they have handler at the end. So I should probably make this consistent, right? So I'm going to say handler here. I'm going to change this to highlight interactables handler, right? Keep your code consistent if you can. Keep the name convention consistent. Don't just randomly name stuff like I just did. Make sure you catch yourself and make sure your code is um, kind of proper. Now, what does this thing actually need? Um, I don't really know at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep those arguments. And I'm going to copy one of the existing handlers that we have. So I'll just go ahead and say like, um, highlight interactables handler. Okay. Go ahead and paste that there. Um, and obviously there's a lot of stuff that we don't need to do here. Let's just go ahead and delete, uh, comment it out in case we need to like reference it. Um, but as you're coding, one thing I like to do is let's put it to do, like, what do we actually need to do here? I'm gonna have to go ahead and say, find all interactable 
entities um, in the game. Actually, no, I don't need to do this. I need to basically talk. I need to keep track of some state, okay? Um, and I believe the way we keep track of state is we have like a global thing that we might be putting flags onto. Again, like I'm jumping between different projects. I work on this game a little bit. I work on my StarCraft II build order thing. I tried to make random videos about uh, JavaScript and Go, Next, whatever. So sometimes I'll not come back to a project for a couple of days and I don't remember half the things that are going on. So I have to like refresh my memory. But I do believe what we need to do is we should get a, a payload here. Let me, let's go back to the create game loop. And this thing needs to take in the payload. Uh, we probably need the world as well. Let's do that. Let's go here. Let's make sure we auto import this so that we don't get um, issues. My auto import not working right now. Sometimes my auto import just doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just copy um, this line. Go ahead and bring in the highlight interactables handler. And then make sure we call it. Now it's red because uh, I think our definition expects this thing, which we don't need. Go ahead and delete it. Now this thing actually needs to be a payload. And what is the payload that we're sending on this event? It happens to be, um, I think we defined that up here. So this thing is a T item. We don't want this to be a T item. We're going to say Boolean. Okay? It's just going to be a Boolean, a flag true or false. Do we want to turn this thing on or turn this thing off? Um, now let's go here and let's refactor this a little bit to make sure make it consistent. Okay, there's no more red here. Cool. So all this, I mean, we're trying to like make this system really decoupled so that like we can easily refactor and add in new features and not have everything like tied together like a big ball of yarn. The more you decouple your system, usually the easier it is to refactor and extend, but also the harder it is to follow your code base. That's the trade-off, right? De decoupling your code by using like event driven systems and by using like, um, you know, these other type of approaches, it makes your code, you know, decouple, but harder to understand and read through in my opinion. Uh, okay, so what are we trying to do? Let's just go ahead and see. I think we have a way to get a global. And I think we might do this. Another great thing that you need to get used to is Command Shift F. This is how you search your entire project. And as your project gets larger, you have a lot of files. Command Shift F is like your best friend. I wanna find out everywhere else in the code base we do ecs.get. Okay, it looks like this is the first place. Now, I do believe there's some code refactoring we need to do uh, where we actually say world. Um, okay, so it looks like we don't have like this, this place where we can store globals. We don't want to store, I mean, technically we could store a Boolean here, but we rather store like global state inside an ECS, ECS like handler. I know half the things I'm saying in this video probably don't do not make sense to most of the people watching because this code base is obviously too large for me to give an overview on. But I think when we create the game loop, let's refresh my memory. Again, this is something you got to do all the time. You got to go back and read through code and like understand how stuff works. We have this world that we set these different things on, right? And I think potentially what we could do is just set a flag here called a uh, highlight interactables and we're gonna set it the false for right now but we're gonna go ahead and set that thing to true so if i were to go ahead and just like um get actually i think i could set it right it set it to whatever um i'll say is highlight enabled okay so that's going to change it to true and false based on what key the user is pasting and so all that worked to basically just to do this Okay, that's like that's all we're doing which is fine we have a really simple event and it has a really simple reducer that basically just updates some global state that we keep track of on this ecs slash world thing uh yeah so what we want to do next is we have this render system where basically what we could do is we could find all the renderable things and actually for right now i'm going to keep this simple i do believe we have an interaction system which finds all the interactable things. And we kind of do a lot of this logic here already. But if we can extend this a little bit, because right now there's logic that says if the player is near the interactable, um, which happens here, 
And again, this code could probably be cleaned up. But basically, we check the distance. If the player is within a certain distance of the interactable thing, then we display right here, we display the text. So again, this code is related to um, this. Where you get close enough, it turns the label on. Which is cool. But uh, what we actually need to do is this. We probably need to get that, that constant that we just created, which was here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this line. And I'm going to say const highlight interactables. I'll say should highlight interactables. I like to make it like a Boolean. And I'll say ecs.get. And we'll do this. Now, I think it's called world in this file. We kind of jump between calling it world and uh, ecs, which is kind of confusing. I think we need to fix that too. It's called world up here. Um, but that should give us back should highlight interact. Okay. This should be a boolean. Now I think I might have to cast this because right now it doesn't know what it is. Um, I think I can I can type it like that. Um, and this thing I can unwrap it like this. Now I can't tell you the intent behind the unwrap and stuff. I think it's like a functional programming way to like make arbitrary function calls that could potentially return undefined or null things to like just force it to throw an error if this thing is not set. Um, so basically we're going to unwrap it to get that boolean back and we're going to say if we are near or this thing is on. I think that should work. Let's try it out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. I'll hold down tab. There we go. It works. We just implemented it. Now that was pretty easy to add in a new feature, right? I mean, it did take me like 16 minutes, but now everywhere in our application, if there's something that's interactable, you don't actually have to be like next to it, have it turn on. Now you can just hold down tab, which is kind of similar to how Diablo 2 does it. And that'll highlight all the interactable things on the page. Now this is useful or if you have like a bunch of items on the page or a bunch of items on the screen and you want to be able to like look at the items that you care about then that's why we're doing this. Now the issue with tab is that you see how it's highlighting the URL up here. Maybe tab is not the best uh, key. Maybe we should use something else like command or options. Let's see what happens if we were to change that to command. Okay, so those keys do not even register on this game for some reason. So I can't use those for some reason. Um, maybe shift. Shift isn't working either. Is this thing even working? Yeah, I might have to look into that. I mean, I'll keep it F right now. Just so it's not tab, because I think tab, we're going to have to do some like e.prevent defaults to prevent it from like tabbing around your page. And maybe that's actually the, um, the fix that we want to do. So let's go back to create controls. And we might want to just prevent the default propagation of these events. So let's just say e.prevent default and see what happens. All right, I'm going to refresh the page. That should make it go back to tab. Go ahead and delete some stuff. Okay, now I can hold down tab and it's not like highlighting the URL in my browser right now. Cool, so that was actually pretty easy to add in. I like it. Now, we did talk. We had like a little meeting to talk about potentially refactoring some, some of our system. The interaction system right now, um, Actually, I don't know. I'm trying to think if this even is, is this even worth refactoring? Um, I think we talked about potentially refactoring the use event. So when you're near an item and you press E, that'll pick the item up. You can also click and drop, drop the item onto the floor, which is nice. I've been working on mainly the item system and stuff. So like the ability to pick up items, use items, drop items, uh, and highlight the, the things above the head. That's a lot of the features I've been working on. Um, but let's take a step back. So how do I use an item? Now, I don't know if I want to get down this path of like refactoring this code because I do have a, because I have this gut feeling that it's going to be a very, very um, rabbit hole refactor. Um, so before I actually like dive down into this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and commit these files that I changed to the ones that I changed and leave the docs off. I'm trying to work on some docs too. But I'm going to say, I'm going to check out a new branch, which I believe I can just do this. And I'll say create a new branch. And we're going to say highlight all interactables. 
go ahead and make that branch and I'll say adding a control to highlight all interactables. Go ahead and commit that. I also don't know why I published this little document. Um, um, so anyway, so if we have time, let's try to refactor how interactables work a little bit. So basically we talked about when a user tries to interact with something, the event that we dispatch, instead of it saying like payload is on, like we should probably just have the reducer that's listening for that event, look through all the entities that are nearby and uh, basically use the item. Right now that logic happens here and I wanted to pull some of that logic out and put it in the actual handler here. So let's go ahead and look at, I think we have like a handle. Um, let's see, how do we do this? Break control, dispatch, player, interact. So we should have like a player interaction handler somewhere. Player interact handlers. Uh, again, the campfire rule. These files end with the handler key and some of them don't. So let's just go ahead and like rename this to say handler at the end, just to keep it consistent. There's also a lot of other ones that don't even have handler at the end. I personally would like to have it say handler at the end. So when you have your file up here, you can tell that you're looking at handler. So campfire rule, let's just go ahead and rename all these to be handlers. And hopefully my other teammates are not annoyed with that refactoring. Now, when you do refactoring like this, make sure you load up your VS Code problem things. Because when you change files, sometimes VS Code and TypeScript are smart enough to like just fix it. Uh, this one's a little lint error. I'll get rid of that. Is item control. What is this one actually doing? Is item control. I wonder why this is even working. I think what we need to do is say like if uh, includes key. I think that's what we wanted. Now I'm not sure why. Uh, let's go ahead and so yeah. Now the app is actually crashing in some places, and let's go and find those things. You can also like I believe Command Click and VS Code will take you to that sometimes. I guess that's only if you use like Next or something. Um, it seems fine. I think I, sometimes you just have to like restart your, your Vite server. Okay, so we're getting some failed to resolve things. That's fine. Let's just go ahead and find those paths. And let's just go ahead and make sure that they're all fixed. And I think it's a matter of just like making sure the files that I changed are cleaned up. Okay, this looks good. This looks good. Um, I think the code's a little bit cleaner, more consistent now. Okay, so what we wanted to do is basically get all the nearby interactables. So I think what we could do is we can say const interactables is equal to world dot get entities by component. And I'll say interactable component. Uh, actually, I don't remember how to do this. I think it's like this. So get all the interactables. Um, and then what we also want to do is we want to check to see like, are we interacting? Well, in this case, we know we're interacting, right? So this one shouldn't even be true or false. I think we could just do it. So let's try doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of the code from the interaction system. And I'm going to go ahead and just like grab what do we need to do. No, I'm going to grab all this and we're just going to go ahead and just gut some of the stuff we don't care about. Let's do that. Let me go ahead and look through here real quick. So we already have the player right here. Um, I might actually refactor this to do get player because this is a helper function that we are started pulling in to make it a little bit easier. So get the player and if the player doesn't exist, return. And then we also have some of this stuff. So like as position, this is just for TypeScript to get the type safety because all these entities are like composable. You don't know what components are attached to the entities. Yeah, I feel like this is going to get a rabbit hole of refactoring, but let's just go ahead and see if we can push power through this. So I'm going to go ahead and just check. I think this logic here, let's say if we're not interacting, let's just go ahead and do this. 
then return, uh, delete that. We got the interactables. Let's delete this. Do we need the parent sprite? I don't think we even do. This is more for like displaying the text. So I'll delete that. Pull in this dist thing, which just comes from a utils. Um, we have the interactable. So now I actually need to loop through. So I let interactable of interactables. We probably make that a cons as well. Go ahead and do that. And we kind of want to just check every single interactable. And we talked about making this more performance and only checking the interactables near the, the player, but I've forgotten like what, what our solution was for that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and say like, if the interactables position, which I believe I can say like position here, and then we could say position so that we get some uh, IntelliSense for the position there. If that, and then what we're trying to do is like get the width and the height of the interactable. So we might actually need to go back and bring that in. So let's go to interaction system. We might need to actually do this. Let's go ahead and pull that out back here. And for every single interactable that we're dealing with, let's just go ahead and import that. Um, import the sprite thing from Pixie. Pixie is like a library we're using for doing the um, rendering to the canvas. Okay, so for every interactable, get the sprite so that we can get the width and the height and divided by two to get the center point. And then we check the distance between the player and the interactable itself. And if we are near, if we're close by, then we need to basically interact with it, right? So if um, the player is trying to interact with this, which I believe we had some code here that was like this. I'll just add that back in for right now. I do want to refactor that. It seems kind of silly that we're doing this. And we also need to check if we can interact. Okay, so we're keeping track of like a Boolean on the player themselves to have a cooldown. Um, technically, we don't need this cooldown. And we talked about like maybe we don't even care about this. Like you should be able to hold down E and it should just pick up all the items that you're near. Potentially. I don't know. I'll keep the cooldown just because it is consistent with how we're doing it. And then we basically check like what exactly are we interacting with? Is it a stairs up, stairs down, or is it an item? Right, so like the potion. So let's try to figure out why this thing is like causing errors. Go ahead and delete some stuff. There we go. It saved, it formatted. When your code auto, auto formats for you, that usually means that you fixed any of your type errors. Okay. Okay. So now, can I auto import these things? I cannot auto import these. Why not? So let's just figure out where these are imported from. Oh, and these were hard coded here. So let's just go ahead and grab both of these uh, directly out of that because I don't think we're going to use them anymore. And I'll paste them right here in the interaction, the player interact handler. Okay, so at this point this is getting kind of kind of crazy, right? Um, for the interaction system itself, now we don't care about like checking the interaction here. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, this should only care about the text. Right? The interaction system should only care about turning the text on or off, depending on if you're near or not. But the player interact handler, this is where I'm going to have to like auto import a bunch of stuff. Let's auto import that. Auto import that. Um, I like to do these all manually because sometimes your your importer will import the wrong file, and then you have to like figure out why it's not working. Uh, it's because it imported the wrong. Thing that was named the exact same thing. So let's just go ahead and import all these things. Okay, there's no errors in that one. Hopefully that's still good. This thing requires a text. Why would it require text though? Text divisible, then set the text visible to so false. I don't think we even need the text anymore. Let's just delete that. Um, You know what, maybe we do. Maybe I shouldn't just delete code unless I truly know what it's doing. So I'll keep that there. This thing, let's bring in Pixie. I feel like this whole file needs to be looked at and refactored a little bit. But uh, again, let's just stay focused. Let's just get the red errors to go away by auto-importing all these things. There's logic about like picking up and playing audio when you do that stuff. About spinning up a new map, loading a new map. I'm not a fan of that logic being in this file, but hey. Okay, so this thing needs app, which I don't know if we even have access to yet. 
So we'd have to figure out a way to like give this thing access to app, which I believe I can do this, and then also text. So text has to come from, let's look at what it used to do. Text used to be here. So we get the parent sprite of the parent sprite, get the sprite. Okay, let's do that. Not find the object. Okay, why can't I find that? Let's just auto import this. Um, it should have auto imported. Why can I not find this thing? Okay, I don't know if my auto importer is just going slow at this point, but there's a lot of stuff yellow. So let's just delete all this stuff. Uh, that, that. Delete this. Now I'm, got, I'm glad I committed before I did all this refactoring because I have a feeling uh, I'm going to be breaking a bunch of stuff. App is defined but is never used. Okay, I guess I don't need it then, so I'll delete it. Uh, I'll just delete that to-do too so I don't have yellow text on my screen. All right, I think we're almost refactored. I think it's almost good. Okay, there's no more problems here. Now, again, load up your problems tab and make sure that you're not running into other issues. There's some issues here. This thing requires app, I believe. I think we can just pass it app there. Uh, of course, we don't have access to app, so we're going to have to like pass it in here. I'm not a fan of what I'm doing right now, but again, like, I'd rather just get it working and then come back and we can like fix this. Uh, this thing needs app. Do we have access to app here? It's called renderer.app. I think that's it. Okay, so I think we fixed all the lint errors, hopefully. And again, let's just go back to the code real quick and make sure we're not like doing something dumb. But once you've interacted with something, we should probably break out of this loop, right? Because this thing lives in a loop now. I should probably break out of the loop so that we don't like interact with all the interactables. Okay, so if I didn't break the entire app, I should be able to go over to this and press E and it should be picked up. And it was, although it didn't display in the item belt, I was still able to use it, which is cool. Um, so now we got to figure out, and this is a good reason why you can write tests over your code. Um, oh, I think my, my app just cro my crashed. My app crashed. Let's go to inspect. Let's figure out why it crashed. Not read property of undefined readme x player interact handler. Um, so it can't find the parent sprite, well, probably because we delete it or something. Resolve renderable. So it might be because we actually like hide it. So we might have to check something else. So what I'm actually going to do is look at this function and what do we remove? We remove renderable. We remove position from it. Um, and we set the item sprite visibility to false. So why is it that uh, it just crashes? Handle item interactable. I'm guessing when we remove it, it's still getting ran here because we're not checking renderable. Like we only want the the renderable ones, I guess. Yeah, this this whole thing I'm doing needs to be like reconsidered. I don't think what I'm doing is proper, but just a side project. If I if I check to only get the renderable interactables, then I don't think it'll crash again when I try to pick up an item. Knock on wood. Let's see. Okay, go ahead and do that. When I pick up the second one, it just crashes. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's first of all just go ahead and say, like, if there is no parent sprite with it, I'm just going to break. I'm just going to continue. I'm going to skip over it. I do need to figure out why I have this. So I'll say to do figure out, out why I need this check to prevent the app from crashing. I'm actually going to, I'm not going to get this thing merged in the dev until like I get this thing figured out. Uh, it's good to add these to do's, so you know, to fix them before you actually like commit your code or something. But let's just try seeing if that fixes our issue at all. Oh, 
Okay, now I can't even, uh, I can't even pick them up. Can't even pick these things up. Okay. Um. Oh, I need to save it's not defined. Then continue. Uh. All right. It still crashes. Why is it still crashing the second item I'm trying to pick up? Because the position is not there? What is the actual error saying? Cannot read property X. That's the position, not the... I think I'm checking the wrong thing. So we remove position from the inter interactable. Yeah, I'm so confused why we do this. Let's just go ahead and say this. I don't think the parent sprite, that was an issue. Okay, I could pick them up both now, and also, like, I think they work. That's weird. Okay, so I think I know what the issue is. I think we have, like, some event system that tells view to re-render when stuff changes. And I have to remember where that code was. So let's go to the, uh, the item belt. And I believe there's, like, an inventory manager on event updated. Let's figure out what's going on here, because when we pick up the item here, it adds the item to the belt. Which is here. And then that should have told view to like refresh the belt a little bit. So let's just make sure that this is working. Um, we should get, when you call add item to belt, oh, we're not actually... I need to omit the updated, right? So we have this like way to basically tell view, hey, you need to refresh because we've changed something in the internal ECS and view doesn't know how to know, like listen for when that changes. So let's try this again. There we go. Okay. so. I think the code is in a better state than it was. I think there's some stuff that I need to look into as a, for example, like why is it that this thing needs that if statement to like prevent it from crashing? Not a fan of that to do I added, but as far as this video is concerned, I've been going for like 40 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and commit what I have to my little feature branch. Um, and I can look into why things are not working exactly how I want them to at a later point. Go ahead and add all this stuff. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just say, like, um, refactoring the way interactables work a bit. Go ahead and push that up. So if you guys enjoyed watching, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Um, and then, like always, feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to maybe ask questions to get help with your coding journey. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.